to another reading of A Thousand and One Nights. My name is Saman Gerard. Let me just get comfortable. Um, we are reading the 455th night. For those of you who didn't read or who didn't tune in, uh, the previous few readings, the previous 454th reading, <laughs> this story is actually about the slave girl called Tavadud and... Uh, She's the slave girl of a big caliph, the commander of the faithful. And what happens is she's actually outsmarting the doctors and the astronomers of the caliph. So they keep asking her questions, hoping that she's dumb, but she's not. She's actually smarter than that. So enjoy the reading. All right. <clears throat> now, when it was the 455th night. She said, It hath reached me, auspicious king, that when the damsel enumerated the mansions and distributed them into their signs, the astronomer said, Thou hast replied already. Now tell me of the planets and their natures, also of their sojourn in the zodiacal sign the aspects auspicious and sinister, the houses ascendants and descendants. She answered, the sitting is narrow for so large a matter, but I will say as much as I can. Now the planets number seven, which are the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. The sun, hot, dry, sinister in conjunction, favourable in opposition, abideth thirty days in each sign. The moon, cold, moist and favourable of aspect, tarrieth in each sign two days and a third of another day. Mercury is of a mixed nature, favourable in conjunction with the favourable and sinister in conjunction with the sinister aspects and abideth in each sign seventeen days and a half day. Venus, temperate and favourable, abideth in each sign five and twenty days. Mars is sinister and wanneth in each sign ten months. Jupiter is auspicious and abideth in each sign a year. Saturn, cold, dry and sinister, tarrieth in each sign thirty months. The house of the sun is Leo. Her ascendant is Aries and her descendant Aquarius. The moon's house is Cancer. His ascendant Taurus his descendant Scorpio, and his sinister aspect Capricorn. Saturn's house is Capricorn Aquarius, his ascendant Libra, his descendant Aries, and his sinister aspect Cancer and Leo. Jupiter's house is Pisces Sagittarius, his ascendant Cancer, his descendant Capricorn, and his sinister aspect Gemini and Leo. Venus's house is Taurus. 
her ascendant Pisces, her descendant Libra, and her sinister aspects Aries and Scorpio. Mercury's house is Gemini Virgo, his ascendant Virgo, his descendant Pisces and his sinister aspect Taurus. Mars's house is Aries Scorpio, his ascendant Capricorn, his descendant Cancer and his sinister aspect Libra. Now when the astronomer saw her cuteness and comprehensive learning and heard her fair answers, he bethought him for a slight to confound her before the commander of the faithful and said to her, O oh, damsel, tell me, will rain fall this month? At this, she bowed her head and pondered so long that the caliph thought her at a loss for an answer. And the astronomer said to her, Why dost thou not speak? Quoth she, I will not speak except the commander of the faithful, give me leave. So the caliph laughed and said, How so? Cried she, I would have thee. Give me a sword that I may strike off his head, for he is an infidel, an agnostic and atheist. At this, Loud, loud the caliph, and those about him laughed, and she continued, O oh, astronomer, there are five things that none knoweth, save Allah Almighty. And she repeated this verse, I, Allah, with him is the knowledge of the hour, and he causeth the rain to descend at his own appointed time. And he knoweth what is in the wombs of female, but no soul knoweth what it shall have gotten on the morrow. Neither wotteth any soul in what land it shall die, verily Allah is knowing, informed of all. Quoth the astronomer, Thou hast said well, and I by Allah thought only to try thee. Rejoined she, Know that the almanac makers have certain signs and tokens referring to the planets and constellations relative to the coming in of the year. And folk have learned something by experience. What be that? Each day hath a planet that ruleth it. So if the first day in the year fall on first day, Sunday, that day is the sun's, and this portendeth, though Allah alone is all-knowing, oppression of kings and sultans, and governors, and much miasma, and lack of rain, and that people will be in great tumult, and the grain crop will be good, except lentils, which will perish, and the vines will rot and flax will be dear, and wheat cheap from the beginning of Tuba to the end of Bar Mahat. And in this year, there will be much fighting among kings, and there shall be great plenty of good in this year, but Allah is all-knowing. What if the first day fall on second day, Monday, that day belongeth to the moon, and portendeth righteousness in administrators and officials, and that it will be a year of much rain, and grain crops will be good, but linseed will decay, and wheat will be cheap in the month Kiak. Also the plague will rage, and the sheep and goats will die. Grapes will be plentiful, and honey scarce, and cotton cheap. And Allah is omniscient. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted say. Now when it was 
the 456th night, she said, It hath reached me, auspicious king, that when the damsel ended her notice of second day, the astronomer said to her, Now tell me, what will occur if New Year's Day fall on third day, Tuesday? She replied, That is Mars's day and portendeth death of great man, and much destruction, and deluge of blood, and dearness of grain, lack of rain, and scarcity of fish, which will be anon be an excess, and anon fail. Lentils and honey in this year will be cheap, and linseed dear, and only barley will thrive, to the exception of all other cereals. Great will be the fighting among kings, and death will be in the blood, and there will be much mortality among asses. What if it fall on fourth day? That is Mercury's day, and portendeth great tumult among the folk, and much enmity, and the rains be moderate, rutting of some of the green crops. Also that there will be sore mortality among cattle and young children and much fighting by sea. That wheat will be dear from Bermuda to Misra and other grains cheap. Thunder and lightning will abound and honey will be dear. Palm trees will thrive and bear abundantly and flax and cotton will be plentiful while radishes and and radishes and onions will be dear, but Allah is all-knowing. What if it fall on fifth day? That is Jupiter's day, and portendeth equity in viziers and righteousness in kazis and fakirs, and the ministers of religion, and that good will be plentiful, Rains and fruit and trees and grain will abound, and flax, cotton, honey, grapes and fish be cheap, and Allah is omniscient. What if it fall on meeting day or Friday? That day appertaineth to Venus, and portendeth oppression in the chiefs of the jinn, and talk of forgery and backbiting. There will be much dew. The autumn crops will be good in the land, and there will be cheapness in one town and not in another. Ungraciousness will be rife by land and sea. Linseed will be dear, also wheat, in Hatur, but cheap in Amshir. Honey will be dear, and grapes and watermelons will rot, and Allah is omniscient. What if it fall on the Sabbath, Saturday? That is Saturn's day, and portendeth the preferment of slaves and Greeks and those in whom there is no good, neither in the neighbourhood. There will be great draught and dearth. Clouds will abound and death will be rife among the sons of Adam. And woe to the people of Egypt and Syria from the oppression of the Sultan and failure of blessing upon the green crops and rotting of grain. And Allah is all-knowing. Now with this, the astronomer hung his head very low and she said to him, O oh, astronomer, I will ask thee one question, which if thou answer not, I will take thy clothes. Ask, he replied. Quoth she, where is Saturn's dwelling place? And he answered, in the seventh house, heaven, in the seventh heaven, sorry. And that of Jupiter? in the sixth heaven, and that of Mars, in the fifth heaven, and that of the sun, 
in the fourth heaven, and that of Venus in the third heaven, and that of Mercury in the second heaven, and that of the moon in the first heaven. Quoth she, well answered, but I have one more question to ask thee. And quoth he, ask. Accordingly, she said, now tell me concerning the stars. Into how many parts are they divided? But he was silent and answered nothing. And she cried to him, put off thy clothes. So he doffed them and she took them. After which the caliph said to her, Tell us the answer to thy question. She replied, O commander of the faithful, the stars are divided into three parts, whereof one third is hung in the sky of the earth, as it were lamps to give light to the earth and a part is used to shoot the demons withal when they draw near by stealth to listen to the talk in heaven. Quoth Allah Almighty, Verily we have dyed the sky of the earth with the adornment of the stars and have appointed them for projectiles against every rebellious Satan. And a third part is hung in air to illuminate the seas and give light to what is therein. Quoth the astronomer, I have one more question to ask, which, if she answer, I will avow myself beaten. Say on, answered she, and Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day, and ceased saying her permitted say. Now when it was the 457th night, she continued, It hath reached me, auspicious king, that the astronomer said, Now tell me what four contraries are based upon other four contraries. Replied she, The four qualities of caloric and frigoric, humidity and siccity. For of heat Allah created fire, whose nature is hot, dry. Of dryness, earth, which is cold, dry. Of cold, water, which is cold, wet. Of moisture, air, which is hot, wet. Moreover, he created twelve signs of the zodiac. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces and appointed them of the four humours. Three, Fiery, Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. Three, Earthy, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. Three, Airy, Gemini, Libra and Aquarius and three, Watery, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Hereupon the astronomer rose and saying, Bear witness against me that she is more learned than I. Away he went, beaten. Then quoth the Caliph, Where is the philosopher? At which one rose hastily and came forward and said to Tavatut, What is time? And what be its limits and its days and what things bringeth it? Replied she, Time is a term applied to the hours of the night and day, which are but the measures of the courses of the sun and moon in their several heavens, even as Allah Almighty telleth us when he saith, Assign to them also in the night, from which we strip off the day, and lo, they are plunged in darkness, and the sun runneth to a place of rest, 
This is the ordinance of the sublime, the all-knowing. How cometh unbelief to the son of Adam? It is reported of the apostle, whom Allah bless and preserve, that he said, unbelief in a man runneth as the blood runneth in his veins, when he revileth the world and time and night and the hour. And again, let none of you revile time, for time is God. Neither revile, <clears throat> excuse me, Neither revile the world, for she said, May Allah not aid him who revileth me. Neither revile the hour, for the hour is surely coming, there is no doubt thereof. Neither revile the earth, for it is a portent according to the saying of the Most High. Out of the ground have we created you, and into the same will we cause you to return and we will bring you forth yet thence another time. What are the five that ate and drank yet came not out of loins no womb? Adam and Simeon, and Salis she camel, and Ishmael's ram, and the bird that Abu Bakr the truth teller saw in the cave. Tell me of the five that are in paradise and are neither humans, jinns, nor angels. Jacob's wolf and the seven sleeper's dog and Esdras' ass and Salih's camel and Duldul, the mule of the prophet, upon whom <laughs> be blessings and peace. What man prayed a prayer? on his carpet, borne by the wind. Solomon, when he prayed on his carpet, borne by the wind. Read me this riddle. A man once looked at a handmaid during dawn prayer, and she was unlawful to him. But at noonday she became lawful to him. By mid-afternoon, she was again unlawful. But at sundown, she was lawful to him. At supper time, she was a third time unlawful, but by daybreak, she became once more lawful to him. <clears throat> this was a man who looked at another slave girl in the morning and she was then unlawful to him. But at midday he bought her and she became lawful to him. At mid-afternoon he freed her and she became unlawful to him. But at sundown he married her and she was again lawful to him. At nightfall he divorced her and she was then a third time unlawful to him. But next morning, at daybreak, he took her back and she became once more lawful to him. Tell me what tomb went about with him that lay buried therein. Jonas waved when it had swallowed him. What spot of lowland is it upon which the sun shone once, but will never again shine till judgment day? The bottom of the Red Sea, when Moses smote it with his staff, and the sea clave asunder in twelve places according to the number of the tribes. Then the sun shone on the bottom and will do so never more until Judgment Day. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted say. Hope you enjoyed the reading. Let's hope Joanna is going to read on Tuesday. <laughs>
Wishing you a wonderful, peaceful night or day or afternoon, wherever you are in this world. And um, as usual, remember to go inwards instead of outwards. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.